know if I'm being schizophrenic or something. But. So you guys know, as of this year, I've been showcasing a lot of brand new white animals that have been appearing out of nowhere. No, not albino. They don't have alb albinism, but it's called leucism. Bro, no way. I just fucking dropped that. And it landed like that. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Here we go. I'm Steve Roberts with an update on the efforts to rescue and reunite the orphaned Minican babies found abandoned in Georgia's Okefenokee Swamp just days ago. The tiny creatures are now receiving critical care at the state's Minican Rescue and Rehabilitation Center after they were discovered severely malnourished and dehydrated. With their mother's fate unknown, the babies had resorted to eating roots and detritus, which nearly proved fatal for the smallest orphans. There weren't. Around the clock efforts by caretakers to replenish fluids and nutrients have stabilized their condition, but the babies currently show limited behaviors beyond constant feeding and resting, which experts say is typical for minikins separated from their maternal source at this young age. While stabilizing the babies remains the short-term priority, reintroducing them to their natural family social structure will be crucial for their continued development. The ultimate goal is still to locate and reunite the orphans with their parents or assimilate them into an existing Minikin family group. To that end, search teams continue their painstaking efforts scouring the dense Okafeniki wetlands for any traces of the orphans' parents or relatives. Efforts are ramped up after dark when the bioluminescent Minikins are most active and visible. This is a race against time, as the Minikin is a critically endangered species with dwindling wild populations. We'll continue to follow their recovery and reunification in the weeks ahead as their future hangs in the balance. This if looks this AI. the rescued Minikin orphans has captured your heart like it has mine, be sure to smash that like button and share this video with your friends and family so they can learn about these incredible tiny creatures too. This right here, and I need everybody to share this immediately, okay, so this can go out to as many people as possible, was one of the doctors that just so happened to be in the plane crash in Brazil. His name was Leonardo Ferreira, and he was assistant professor of microbiology and immunology at the Medical University of South Carolina and a Hollings Cancer Center. Now, this is the thing, right? And stay with me here. He was spoken to about his lab's work developing regulatory T-cell-based therapies and how he sees the immunotherapy landscape changing over the coming years. And as you can see right here, so TikTok doesn't think I'm actually fucking bullshitting since they want to suppress my other video. And before we get into what his T-cell-based research consisted of, as you can see, William Feisler, a general practitioner, knew six people who died in the crash. Jose Roberto Leonel Ferreira, a recently retired doctor who also died in the wreck, was one of Feisler's teachers during his undergraduate studies. But this was literally what he was working on. With this type of therapy, right, a specialist nurse collects your T-cells. These are then sent to the laboratory where a change is made to the T-cell to become CAR T-cells. After a few weeks, you have a drip containing these cells back into your bloodstream. The CAR T-cells then recognize and attack the cancer cells. Are you fucking kidding me? And then this just adds to it. A tragic passenger on a fatal flight had also sent messages to her family saying that she was in quotation scared of the in quotations old plane. Then she had expressed her concern about the ATR 72500, which is pretty hyped up in today's society. In the family chat group shortly after boarding saying that in quotations, I'm so scared of this flight and I swear that it's an old plane. Also saying allegedly that there's a broken seat and that it's chaos. And then this, allegedly the plane had been undergoing a series of maintenance shutdowns. In March, the Vopass aircraft experienced a hydraulic problem with abnormal contact with the runway that caused, in quotation, structural damage, leaving the aircraft out of operation for four months. And then following registration, the plane spent 17 days parked in the state of Bahia before taking off on March 28 to undergo repairs. And then this, more than three months later on July 9th, the aircraft was finally used for commercial flights again. But then the jet returned without any passengers after experiencing a depressurization in flight on the first route. The aircraft was grounded for another four days in order to undergo repairs. And if that isn't enough, this just so happened to be one of the individuals that unfortunately lost their lives as well. Leona Vasada. She worked as a lawyer and specialized in aviation litigation. She was involved in at least 90 legal cases against Brazilian and international airlines. That's allegedly, by the way, even though you can find it for yourself. But I mean, people, come on. I'm going to keep researching into who specifically was on this flight and who those specific doctors were. I'm not going to let go of this, especially considering the fact that my content is currently being suppressed when I talk about it. So like I said, make sure you share this to every single motherfucking person that you can. Well, 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 first of all, I love you. Second of all, 
I am so excited. I have not even brushed my hair. I'm still kind of chilling Saturday morning and there's been an earthquake on Bouvet Island. Let's take a look. There should only be minor seismic activity, but here we are with a 5.6 at a depth of a somewhat mysterious 10 kilometers, which USGS says is when they don't know the depth. Hmm. We know that Bouvet Island was the location of Alien vs. Predator, but I bet you didn't know this. Bovatoya Island, but it's not on the ice. It's 2,000 feet below it. Yes, that was Meg 2. They have all the juicy intel. Not the only one with a satellite over in Antarctica. Always the mysteries in Antarctica, even in 1957 with this unusual ionospheric disturbance. But back to Bouvet. I have been studying everything about this island. And I'm definitely not the only one. Since a mysterious South Atlantic blob anomaly showed up nearby, it hasn't erupted for 2,000 years, which does make it sort of strange that this website does quite frequent updates on the island. It says it has a meteorological station and studies foraging strategies. It's uninhabited. Not much for land use, except other, hmm, perhaps foraging. It's got exports, which is peculiar since it's uninhabited. And the imports include aluminum structures. Small print, defense is the responsibility of Norway. Well, I hope they don't have an issue because it's a third way around the world to Oslo. Here's just a little quick hi to our friendly neighborhood blob. Here's a scientific article showing how Bouvet sits near the fault lines. It has rare earth elements, as if we ever doubted, and an EU anomaly. Well, since I'm not a scientist, I had to look that up. It's europium, and it's used for rods in nuclear reactors and lasers. I'm not the only one with a satellite over in Antarctica. Funny you should mention, because Followers know that I love the TV show Secrets of Skinwalker Ranch. They use a laser to try and agitate UAPs. Where we've detected all kinds of radiation spikes and obtained evidence of an invisible anomaly that has deflected other lasers and GPS devices in the past. Well, at the South Pole Research Station, they use the same laser, but it's for weather testing. Mm. And measurements. But it's not on the right. ice. It's 2,000 feet below it. I'll see you in the comments. Take care. This is the real footage. Honestly, praise God. I was not expecting that, but he's pop he can do anything. Anything is possible in Christ. So, yeah, I'm just amazed, baffled, and in shock. And this is the tampered footage. <laughs> Watch carefully, because rumour has it that this Olympic skateboarder was told she could not mention Jesus on the microphone. So instead, she cleverly used sign language to say, Jesus Christ is the way, the truth and the life. The Olympics also tried to stop this surfer by telling him if he didn't remove his image of Jesus from his board, he would be instantly disqualified. People, this and the sad mockery in the opening ceremony is exactly why I decided to not even watch five minutes of the entire Olympics. If you also boycotted the Olympics, let me know in the comments section and please do subscribe. I said, well, there's good news and there's bad news. He said, what do you want to hear first? I said, well, give me the bad news. He said, all right. He said, well, number one, we have to remove your stomach and esophagus. <laughs> but if you survive the operation and survive the, the chemotherapy, uh, we'll put a tube in and you use a blender t to, now as your stomach, they'll grind up all your food and people that do that seem to live longer. I said, well, you th the good news? He said, well, that's the good news. <laughs> I said, well, what's chemotherapy? And he looked at me and without batting an eye instantly, he said, it's FDA approved. <laughs> now that just wasn't the right thing to say to me. I mean, he's an MD, he's not going to use anything that isn't. So I tried to get out of him what chemotherapy truly was. 
He wouldn't tell me, so I wanted to see it. I demanded to see it. Because you see, being a youngster on an Indian reserve going to God's banquet table, I learned to see color coming out of people. I see the color around your body. It's beautiful. And I wanted to see this stuff. I wanted to see that if it was a color maybe that would match mine. It looked terrible. And I turned the bag around. I, I didn't turn it around. The, the attendant turned it around. And there was a, a red skull and crossbones on the back of the bag. And the statement said, under no circumstances, even when this bag is empty, must it be cut open. Death can ensue. You mean you're going to pump all this stuff into me and then what's left will kill you? And I said, you know, I said, the address here is Missouri. I said, I'm going to Missouri. I walked out, walked right down, spent the thousand bucks for a ticket to Missouri, and they wouldn't let me in the chemotherapy plant. I had to hire an attorney. There was a lot of kerfuffle. I finally got in. It cost me quite a bit of money to get into that plant. They were very nice. I got a full, complete rundown on chemotherapy. I have the chemical makeup of chemotherapy. They gave it to me. And I walked out with my attorney. It was all done and said. We left, and guess what? I was no further ahead because I'm not a chemist. I don't know what this chemical breakdown is. So I went to a compounding pharmacy knowing that they had a chemist in staff. And the man looked at it and he looked at me and frowned and said, uh, well, this is part of the war division, the chemical department of the armed forces. Well, it's right here in Missouri as well. <laughs> Why don't you just go over there and ask them if this is what I think it is, mustard gas. And it kind of really bothered me that I'd been so stubborn and I'd have gone ahead and done this. And now I found out that we're going to pump mustard gas into my body. And, I, you know, there, there's, they told me I was going to die if I didn't do this. The only thing that was in it was water. They'd mixed it up or something and they... Bro, no way. I just fucking dropped that. And it landed like that. What the fuck? Bro. No fucking way. I just dropped that and it just fucking made it like that. That's crazy. I just caught this today. Look at this. Wow. You're a pigeon or what? Returned to you. The plane stuck on the air. You know how I know we're living in a simulation? Someone put the wrong texture pack on that rock. That doesn't belong here. Let me tell y'all true story. Be so boom. Watch this video to the end. Taylor Swift, I got you. You thought I would have found out? This video I'm about to show you is insane. TikTok, this is for entertainment purposes only. Let's go. This is crazy. No way. This is crazy. Stop playing with me, son. What the f Ah! Oh, guys, my head! Ah! This is crazy, guys. This commercial came out in 1981. How is this even possible? I just showed you. I just showed you. Taylor Swift is a TT. Whether you want to believe it or not, the proof is there. This is what I'm telling you, guys. Nothing is real in the Matrix. Do you understand now? Do you get it? <laughs> Stop playing with me, son. TikTok. This is for entertainment purposes only. I can't take this anymore. CLs, TTs, SSs, Rs, SWs, all of these letters. I'm starting to learn the alphabet all over again, guys. <laughs> stop playing with me, son. Yo, this gotta stop, guys. I, I got a headache. I gotta go. But I tell you one thing: if I ever see anybody in the streets and I tell them about this video and they don't believe me, but I just show them proof, there's only one thing left for me to do. Ah! I don't know if I'm being schizophrenic or something. But I feel pounding under my feet. And listen. 
What the fuck? It's coming from like under the ground. I can feel the vibrations in my feet. It's like, don't, don't, don't. Like, what is that sound? It's coming from under the grass. Making me feel like I'm going insane or something. Like it's loud. It just stopped. What the hell, man? What was that? This is uh, Brian talking in the background. Right, so look, Rachel, um, I'm the, the person the that recorded this. I'm with my daughter. A um, little backstory here. Um, two go. days earlier, I had uh, seen some uh, clouds in the sky and some other stuff. Uh, an angel and huh. either way it's it, basically it said we needed to, to meet see that happen too often, right? at the rainbow There's, i put the previous video in there if you want to see that anyway so we're driving to the uh, this to the spot where i usually film stuff uh for my channel i'm just gonna let you listen and then i just want you to pay attention to the cloud i turn the brightness way down um just so you can actually see this cloud that stays with us oh, the entire time on, Look, Rachel, you seen this? <sighs> this so what I'm going to do is I'm just let you watch this. Um, pay attention pretty, to the cloud. It? Pay attention to how close the cloud nervous? gets to us. No. Look at okay. the tops of the trees. They're even being blown by this cloud. And then pay attention to when the cloud stops. I, I put it in here, then I slowed it down for you too. So just to show you what's going on. And then pay attention to the ending. Okay, and remember, I'm just using cap cut to, to, to enhance this, okay? So, this is just the brightness turned down. So, so the original videos are out there. I'm going to stop talking. I just want to let you guys watch this. The ships are, uh, the bottom of them, they're black. They have little black circles. Oh, it's following us. It's pulsating. I'm gonna stop talking because I'm crazy. Like, Rachel, I don't go up there. I'm just saying that uh, that's pretty weird. Hold on, there's a little rainbow right there. And I want to show you what it's gonna look like. I'll notice this cloud is staying right with us. If you look at the top, it's not even a cloud. You're looking at the top right there. It is staying right with us. And it's going to get really close now. And there's going to be an audio that I really can't explain. But I'm sure there's some explanation for it. I'm going to start slowing down here. And I want you to watch the cloud. This is in slow motion now. At half speed. Watch the cloud itself. Remember now, it was going 60, 65 miles an hour, so it has to stop. The momentum pushes the bottom to the right and turns the entire cloud 45 degrees. Like I said, I put this in slow motion so you can see it again. Remember now, this is the exact same cloud, the exact same position. And looking at the, the, what's inside, it's, it's exactly the same. And here goes the cloud. The cloud is now, 
I'm stopping. The cloud's trying to stop. Watch this. You see the cloud turning there. And I'm going to let you watch the ending. Uh, that's all I got to say. Okay. I'm ready. Okay. I'm ready. Homelessness in Hawaii is out of control. There's more homeless people here per capita than any other state now. I drove to all four islands and there's people sleeping on the streets everywhere. On Oahu, the entire western side of the island is covered in trash and tents. What the hell? There's people living in drainage ditches in downtown Honolulu. I walked through a camp with hundreds of people who've been living in a thrown together village for years now. On Maui, they line the waterways. And then I found another village on Maui where there are some structures that are unbelievable. What? People can't afford it here. And also drugs and booze. Hawaii's just like the mainland. What happened to America? This is not paradise, people. Hey, if you're still here, please do me a favor and give this video a thumbs up and please subscribe to the channel if you have it already. Thanks. If you've never heard of the Roman Circus Theory, you should watch this video. I don't care how long he works and I don't care what he does. There is no job worth $2 million a year. That's why they pay athletes these fantastic salaries. I was listening to the radio the other day. They just contracted to pay one, one player on one team $6 million. Can you believe this? And why is that? It's the Roman circus. What does the emperor do when the people become restive and when the people are asking questions and when the people don't like the policies of the emperor? He sends them to the circus. He creates a circus. He builds a giant coliseum. Then he begins to throw the Christians to the lions. And he has great chariot races and football games and basketball games, all to keep the idiots preoccupied with things that don't mean anything in the scheme of the entire world so that they don't have the time to learn what the truth is, so they don't ever get smart enough to learn how they're being manipulated, so they don't ever question the emperor. That's why they pay a player on a football team three million dollars a year. It is the Roman circus. Wow, yeah, spot on. And that's just it. The rulers of this world don't care what you believe in, as long as you believe in something, as long as you're not paying attention to what they're doing. But they are the few and we are the many. The only real way they can control us, and they know this, is by causing enough divisiveness and having us kill each other first. Thanks for watching, guys. Stay safe out there. Have you ever seen George Washington in his Freemasonic regalia? Obviously, this is a painting, but he was a well-known Mason. Up top, it says Washington as a Freemason. There's a number of things going on here that I would like to acknowledge. But the main thing I want to talk about today is the wedge that you can see up top in this arch. This is known as the Keystone. Let me show you a couple more examples where you'll see this keystone. So here you can see this arch going from one pillar to the other and above where the keystone would be is an eye. This would be the eye of God and he is looking through where the wedge would have been down at the scene below. And so the keystone in this instance is missing, but notice that there is light shining through that gap. Here's a book cover called the Royal Arch. You will see that keystone up top once again with the circle and the letters. Here's another example. You see light shining through where the keystone would be. And this keystone has been shown in many different ways. So here as an example, there is a beehive in the middle of the keystone. And here you can see a pin that represents the keystone. It says, let there be light. It's referring to the light shining from the heavens through that hole. And this is where things start to get really interesting, and it speaks to why I'm even talking about this to begin with. But notice that around the scene, there is the zodiac wheel, and where the keystone would be is right in between where Gemini and Cancer is. Here's another example of the two pillars and the royal arch, and right in the middle where the keystone is, is labeled Cancer. So there's actually a relationship with this keystone and Cancer. This is really important stuff. Here you can see why Cancer is depicted as being the top of the arch, because what they're really showing is the beginning of three of the four seasons. So Aries begins spring, Cancer begins summer, 
and then we have Libra, which begins the fall. Here, they're very explicit that Cancer represents the keystone. Notice that there's seven stars beneath the keystone. This is symbolic for a lot of different reasons. The letter G, by the way, as an example, is the seventh letter of the alphabet, which I think is interesting. And the major arcana card that corresponds with Cancer is the chariot card, which is the seventh card of the major arcana. And then also, most of Cancer takes place during the seventh month, which is July. Here's another wedge. Notice that the wedge at the very top has the letter Chet. This is C-H-E-T. This is a Hebrew letter. It's really interesting. This letter symbolically represents a handful of things, including a canopy or an enclosure, an inner space. And when you have this royal arch motif that is bridging the gap between these two pillars, you are kind of making a similar shape, right? You can see that, that the left side of this letter could be symbolically the left pillar, the right side could be symbolically the right pillar, Boaz and Jaquin, and the very top could be this canopy or symbolic arch. Well, it turns out that this canopy can be seen in a few different places, including traditional wedding canopies. And traditional wedding canopies have four pillars to them. This is a traditional Jewish wedding canopy, but you will see that this motif is kind of echoed in a lot of traditions. As an example, you see it in the chariot card as well. So you see the four pillars or posts, and up top, you can see this canopy. And to the lower left, you will see this letter, Chet. And, you know, I just think it's fascinating that this letter is associated with this keystone, which is associated with cancer. It corresponds with the chariot card, and then you actually literally see the canopy above the charioteer's head. And where the keystone would be, you see the crab. And here you see the canopy once again, and there's actually a symbolic arch on the charioteer's head, right? And where the keystone would be, you see that star. In my opinion, this is symbolic of the North Star. Here's another example. The chariot card has this canopy motif. It has the four pillars or posts. And down below, it also has the alternative hermetic title, Lord of the Triumph of Light. This is the light that's shining through Cancer. This is the symbolic overlap. This is the correspondence between Royal Arch Freemasonry, the keystone, the light that shines through, the number seven, the chariot card, and the Hebrew letter that associates all of this together. Well, remember I showed you the keystone and there's a beehive within it. Well, this keystone is symbolic of Cancer and it's really interesting that within the constellation of Cancer, you have the beehive cluster. And as you can see, this is really a complete system that's linking all of these various symbols together. And what it really speaks to is this older belief that Cancer was known as the gateway of man meaning that we enter into this reality, into this realm, via Cancer, and we exit via Capricorn. This is an older Babylonian belief, and you guys can do research on it. It's a really fascinating concept when you really think about it. But for now, I just felt like I would introduce this idea and let you know that it relates to Royal Arch Freemasonry and the symbols that are associated with that system, including the Keystone. And I just find this all fascinating. As always, I would love to know what you think. Thanks. This looks unreal. What is going on? Has it always been like this? So you guys know, as of this year, I've been showcasing a lot of brand new white animals that have been appearing out of nowhere. No, not albino. They don't have albinism, but it's called leucism. 
basically there are white animals well we just found one of the rarest ones of all y'all check this out have you guys ever seen a white giraffe before now I'm not going to disclose the location because there was actually a couple other white giraffes found it before and poachers got to it and unfortunately poachers did what poachers do even though I'm not going to disclose the location I'm sure the engineer is going to do what it do and um, yeah they're going to find out anyways but there's only one white giraffe left y'all this is the only one and it has been fitted with a tracker so they make sure poachers don't get to it although I don't know how that's going to stop them because you know, by the time they get to it, they'll probably be unalive. Here's a video of them right over here, y'all. Um, these were the ones that got unalive by poachers. You know, again, I'm not going to disclose the location, but these were the last two left, right? You got the mother and the child. And yeah, these were the ones that were taken out by poachers, you know? Looks Humanity can be so cruel. Makes no sense that all these things want to do is live. And then, you know, you got demonic entities just go on and take them out. Which is like the furthest act of God. You know what I'm saying? That's like the furthest thing from a God's mind. Yeah, y'all. Only one white giraffe left, y'all. Let me know what you guys think about this video. Like, follow, and share for more videos like this. Thank you for tuning to my frequency. Let's get this shift. Peace in. Alright, that's it for today's session. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up so this gets recommended to other people. And please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks again everyone for showing up. I'll catch you in the next video and I will see you around.